We got a rough one here. A homeowner asked me if I had a pole saw that they could borrow, and I said no. But I checked around and ran into a friend of mine who had this Poland 445 Pro, and it's just a bunch of pieces. He said, ah, maybe you can try to get that going. So we'll see what we can do. It's rough. Not going to put a lot of money into it, if any, but I'll run to the hardware store. There's no screws for the carburetor. I'll run to the hardware store and get a couple screws and put it together. See if we can get it running. Let's do it. All right, back from the hardware store. Picked up a couple screws that I think will fit. I took this in and let's go ahead and hook up what we have here, <laughs> which isn't much and see if it'll prime and eventually run. The fuel lines don't look too bad. They look in the tank. Well, we're missing a filter, but I just want to see if it'll fire. So we'll go ahead and put together what we got here without putting too much time into it and see what happens. Oopsie. That's not good. Maybe I didn't get the right size screws. I'm just going to dump a little fuel in there and see what happens. Yeah. It's priming. How about that? <laughs> I can't believe it. I guess I need to take the carburetor apart, take a look at it. Uh, that diaphragm's crusty. That's not good. Half turn, one, one and a quarter. There she opened up. And when you bottom these out, you don't want to turn it down hard. You'll feel it when it hits the end. Just be real gentle about it. And I'm going to go out one and a quarter turns. There, I hit the end there. So there's a half, one, one and a quarter right there. I've got another wall broke carburetor here. I'm gonna see if I can put this diaphragm on here just to get by.
All right. Let's go put it back on and see what it'll do. I don't think that's going to work. It's not very tight. I think you bought the wrong screws. Yeah, <laughs> the filter's gone. Well, I've got good news and I got bad news. My buddy had a screw for this unit, but it came out of one that he has similar to this. And so he let me take this to see if I could find something. I went to Ace Hardware and they've got nothing like this. So I went online and I think I could find one shipped for eight bucks for a couple of these, which is too much. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to put this together since he let me use this screw and at least get this little job that I need to get done done if I can get this going. And in addition to that, we're still missing the air filter and the cap for the air filter. So this is kind of a hodgepodge job, but uh, we'll see if we can do it. I've only got one of these screws and this one's holding a little bit, even though it's the wrong thread. So, we'll see what we can do. Well, that's a good firm fit. And this one I don't want to over tighten, but it's in there pretty good. Let's fuel it up and see if we can get it running. This thing was just sitting in the junk, so... I sure hope it'll run. I'm not expecting a lot out of it. I put a new fuel filter in and made sure all the fuel lines were right. One was kinked and I shortened that and straightened that out. So we'll see how we do here. Choke on. See if we can prime it. Oh yeah. Let's give it a pull and see if we can get it running. Almost. pole saw, the pole and the saw, and hook that up, see if we're ready to go. Well, I hate to admit it, but I was seeing how loose the chain was, and my hand slipped, and it's a sharp chain. <laughs> Anyways, I sliced my finger. But the show must go on, so I'm going to loosen this up. and see why that's binding. There we go. I better get a glove. Or a rag.
There we're turning. Ah, it's just full of junk. I think this thing's been just sitting out in the field for months, if not years, so. But that's moving nice and free now. Now I can adjust the chain. That's too loose there. Still moving smooth. I like to adjust it so you just, the teeth don't quite come out when you pull on it there. I'm going to tighten that back down. There we go. There, we're locked in. Tighten her down. Good. This thing's about nine feet long, I'd say. I'll give it a pull. And see if we're turning up there. some screws to hold the carburetor onto the head. I went to the hardware store and tried to match it up the best I could and I didn't do a very good job. Anyways, the new ones just came in. Quick shipping. Actually, I'm going to put this guy on the link below because uh, he was very knowledgeable very responsive and I got this in two days from eBay there's the part number in case you have this you need those screws which I doubt you do the only reason I did is because this came out of the junk it's two inches long I think it's a 915 with a hex head on it and I'll show you what I put in <laughs> my guess was way off I put a fine thread I figured it was going into like a metal sleeve. Actually, that one held a little bit, but it's way off. You can see the difference. It's a real coarse thread. And as you know, I went a lot of different places trying to find that. You've got to get a Poland screw for that if you want it to hold well. And there we go. Not too tight. Just aluminum and plastic. But she's solid now. Let's go do a little work. I haven't run this for months, maybe six months. I drain the fuel out of it and run it out of the carburetor and it always fires right up for me. Otherwise you're gonna run into problems with your carburetors and getting gummed up and clogged up and fuel lines rotting out and all kinds of stuff. So we'll see how this goes.
it looks a little squirrely now, but the homeowner will be happy that it's trimmed back like this because it'll fill in nice and be thick and still be manageable if she keeps up with trimming those branches. You could even do it with a, a hand pole trimmer. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.